Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS. If you're new, welcome and welcome back KS family. Let's run the numbers. Bitcoin currently down 1.93% to 47,793. Ethereum down 0.14% to 4004. I focus on helping you leverage the professional smart money mindset to assist you to be more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love gaining real wealth in the process. If you would like daily updates on price movements in the crypto market, seven days a week, 365 days a year, please subscribe to YouTube. Life can be a rocky road, and just as cryptos pull back, we can have life pullbacks. Always remember that the sun will come out again, and there is always hope. We're sending our love and healing thoughts to you out there if you're going through any form of life pullback. We're with you. You're not alone. Rule 774. Master yourself to master the market. Many investors and traders, when they enter any market, think it's all about indicators and getting something to some special secret source. Actually, self-mastery is incredibly important. You can have the best tools in the world, but if you are not psychologically prepared, you will lose money. When people make money, the be all and end all of existence, it becomes scared money. Scared money is always at risk of loss. That's why we focus on real wealth. Real wealth is much more than money. It's about inner and outer peace, context, kindness, courage and honor, integrity and decency. Our focus here is to set a positive life trend. There's another critical thing to understand, that money without meaning is simply another form of poverty. Rule 138, all investors become traders every time they buy or sell. Many investors don't really worry too much about the price when they enter. They're looking at the longer term prospects. One unfortunate thing is that the mass media tends to attract investors near the peak of price. That means that many investors can get locked in unknowingly at very, very high prices. Having the trading mindset is all about understanding where price action is and scaling in and scaling out, always seeking to buy around the best possible price and also selling at an optimal level. There are many things that can aid and facilitate your investing and of course trading journey. But one of the most important things is to fight self-doubt and self-sabotage. The problem with self-sabotage is that we don't know we're doing it to ourselves. Self-doubt is potentially the greatest for fuel for self-sabotage. That's why I put this little quote here every day. It's important to understand how unique you are and what that means. There will never ever be another one of you in this world. And there has never been anyone like you previously. That automatically makes you deserving of kindness, love, meaning, and every success in life. But it also comes with a caveat. We need to be kind to ourselves and to other people. As promised, the masterclass was released on the 11th of December. Many emails went out, but some bounced. If you had a bounced email or if you didn't receive an email for the significant discount, the 90% discount on this masterclass, please let me know. As there were some issues with the previous email, I've just put an easy email to remember here. It's kstandf at gmail.com. I'd just like to thank RC for the very nice comment that was made. The masterclass is totally on another level. I cannot think of one guru influencer who will not benefit. Unfortunately, most think they know too much already. The more I learn from your masterclass, Ken, the more I learn how little I actually know, despite being studious, a studious sponge on the crypto universe for nine months. In life, usually those who can't do teach and those who can do cannot teach. Ken can do both, which is pure genius. Thank you so much, RC. I'd like to also say thank you to Vlad. Hi, Ken. Really enjoying the masterclass. You're a great teacher. I've been looking at the charts for years, and in a matter of days, I've learned more than in all the previous time. 
not only the content but the way it's presented makes all the difference thank you thank you my friend that's very nice rule 45 is incredibly important to understand the behavior of your beloved alts you need to understand bitcoin's gravity rule 45 no alt can escape bitcoin's gravity it's good to zoom out and look at bitcoin's price over the long term this is basically the representation of the crypto market that's what bitcoin represents even if you don't like bitcoin it's really really important to look at it the ks model which is a crypto technical trading model based on institutional price psychology is currently setting upper and lower boundaries on current price momentum at the lower boundary at 25624 and the upper boundary at 176275 we still expect the peak around the 25th of may 2022 however the road to the top is really really rocky of course people expect really good upward price momentum that's not a problem everybody can cope with that extremely well it makes people happy but the downward price momentum is the thing that will shake you out if anything could you could expect and should expect 20 30 40 even 50 percent reductions in price and be able to cope with that this is all a part of making volatility your best friend that's why we always have to make in advance probabilistic choices what happens today if your beloved cryptos your gang of cryptos was to suddenly go exponentially up what would you do if it was to fall through the floor what would you do if it was just going sideways what would you do having these answers to these questions all the time is the professional mindset i'll show you what i mean on a chart of bitcoin for example bitcoin's price could come down into this red area what would you do bitcoin's price could come up into this green area again what would you do we can see this particular price which is the i'm not sure where i'm going box of bitcoin's momentum let's just change that a little so that we can see what's cooking we need price to get over this initial resistance at around 51,000 to start trading positively in this zone we'll know that then the probability of price is going up and once price reaches this particular point which is around 54,900 and gets into this green zone we can say that it looks like we're off to the races remember there is no certainty in any financial market especially bitcoin and crypto in fact rule 112 markets profit in uncertainty it's literally the times people are have the greatest uncertainty or are the most uncertain that great returns are created and you can be an investor seeking to dollar cost average in on these long tail rejections it's really interesting because people feel like buying when the price goes green and they feel like selling when the price goes red it should be the exact opposite that is the professional smart money mindset and it doesn't come easily you have to literally rewire your mind what are we actually seeing here in the market at the moment we've seen we've got two resistance lines above price is below that that's negative air price hasn't managed to come back up and test this resistance line it's getting pushed down we can see another level of resistance here i'll just make that line a little bit brighter there you go we can see this level of resistance is holding price down quite well we have a level of support here as well it's going to be really interesting what happens in the next couple of days smart money institutional money always wants to push the price down now why is that why don't they just want the prices to go up i'll just give you a quick indication if price is here and it comes down to here that's that's a little bit hard to see but that's a 36 percent reduction <laughs> there you go but if price comes back up to that level that level that we were at approximately it's a 57 percent increase notice notice the big big difference come down by 36 go up by 57 this is what smart money knows this is why price is negatively biased 
Rule 234, crypto eats technicals for breakfast. What this means is technical analysis that comes from the stock market and the foreign exchange market. Of course, they're good foundations, but the problem is crypto is so incredibly volatile. It's always exploding and imploding and doing all sorts of weird and wonderful things. Literally, the volatility of crypto makes many technical patterns from the stock market and the Forex market invalid. Just keep this in mind. I really appreciate the comments yesterday that going through more cryptos is so helpful and valuable to the community. I'll do that and spend less time on the news. We'll just go through it quickly. We can see on a more marked up chart, the price is still under resistance. It's trying to get above it, but it's just having a little bit of problem. We'll see how things go. A number of issues that we can look through very quickly. Mt. Gox, Omicron, inflation and tapering, transport, the India crypto ban, or the India CBDC, Evergrande, and there's a couple of others, but we'll just do it really, really quickly. We do this because you need to be informed. Smart money is always throwing out a narrative to basically take the money of retail investors and traders. We need to become immune to the news headlines. We just need to look at the price. I always find it quite hilarious to look at the news headlines. Why? Because one move, <laughs> they give the same answer for if it goes up or down. Stocks end lower after moves by central banks. Well, stocks were moving higher before. We had headlines on that yesterday. We find this all the time in the mainstream media. Different areas are used to explain the same event, whether it goes up or whether it goes down. Just be aware of that. We can see the Bitcoin Mt. Gox reserves have not changed. They're completely static. When looking at Omicron, we can see it's rapidly spreading throughout the globe. We can see a number of increases across many countries. Of course, our thoughts and feelings and well wishes, healing thoughts are with everybody. We can see also that the total number worldwide has gone up about 5,000 from yesterday. If we look across the world, we're seeing about 273.1 million cases, about 5.35 million deaths. What we're seeing is that in certain countries, there are very large outbreaks. We can just do this and just understand what's cooking. At the moment, there are a lot of news headlines. Coming out of the UK, where about 90,000 new cases were reported overnight, Throughout the world, 622,904 new cases have been reported. We can see globally that we've had several waves and it looks as though we're entering into a new one. From a market perspective, we need to be aware of these issues. We can see the transportation indexes dove off a cliff recently around the 1st of December and have managed to bounce up, but they're still under pressure. We can see the airlines are under pressure, of course, because when we look at the global situation, we can understand what's happening in the market more. What does that mean to things like inflation? If lockdowns reoccur, we could expect inflation to go up. Why is that? Because of supply chain disruption. It's a big, big problem. Are we seeing the major indexes such as the NASDAQ reflect this? No, we're not. It's coming up and it looks to be consolidating quite reasonably. A little bit of weakness there, but not so bad. What about the 10 year and five year break even inflation rate? They're coming down because the Fed is going to speed up its reduction, <laughs> speed up its reduction in purchases. It's going to put less money in month on month. What do we see with Bitcoin? It's just coming back to a level of support through here. Let's have a look at the Bitcoin Indian rupee. What we can see here when the bans, the potential bans on crypto were talked about, we had a massive sell off in the local Indian market. We can see it's pretty much flatline now, but there is a degree of weakness here. I'd like to thank Daniel who reached out and shared this particular link. This is the Wazirex co-founder and chief operating officer. He says that there's a lot of uncertainty in the Indian market, but of course, there's also a tremendous amount of uptake. 
The India crypto market is facing the same kind of challenges as many markets around the world. It's really nothing new. But over time, things will get clarified. Nothing can stop crypto anyway. This data is actually from Wazirax. I joined up this platform to track the local Indian market and to better understand the source data. Thank you, Daniel, for reaching out. The remaining issue that we need to look at is Evergrande. I captured this in episode 321. I also did a deep dive on the India issue with crypto in episode 344. The best way to assess the Evergrande situation is to put it in a deeper context. Evergrande, Fantasia, Cynic, Vanky, Country Garden, Greenland Holdings, Kaiser, they're all part of an ecosystem in China. They're Chinese property development firms. Looking at the market sentiment, what do we see here? We let the numbers speak to us. You can see this particular blue line. That is Evergrande's share price. Let's zoom in here and see what's cooking. We can see that there's an enormous amount of duress in the Chinese property market segment. Many new, t new retail investors and traders could look at this and say, oh, I've got to get in, I've got to get in, it's going to bounce. Not necessarily, my friends. I wouldn't touch this with a thousand foot pole. When you've got a, any industry under significant duress, unless you're shorting it, please don't touch it. And one thing about derivatives such as options and futures, please do not touch them until you are professional. That means that you are consistently profitable. Why is that? Because so many influencers are always shilling their <laughs> leveraged links. The reason is that you actually end up trading with much more money than you actually have. And when things go against you, and they will because crypto is so volatile, you'll find that you actually lose your entire account from one bad trade. I've seen so many horror stories wrapped around options and futures. Please be very, very, very careful. What you realistically need to do is learn the foundations first, and then you scale, always buying at spot. That way that you can actually write out all the pluses and minuses in the crypto market. And you know, it's a really volatile market, but you can make volatility your best friend. We can see from that analysis that the Chinese property market is under duress. Of course, we would expect the Chinese government to step in and do something about it. The Chinese people love their property. They have the majority of their wealth tied up in property that they're not going to be very happy if that wealth suddenly plummets by 90 percent of course the government will do something if it didn't it would be very bad for the government in times of uncertainty we've got to keep our eye on bonds particularly bond prices when the stock market is under stress we will see an outflow from crypto and stocks into bonds or from crypto to stocks. Crypto is highly speculative by nature. The stock market, many people find the volatility of stocks to be pretty wicked. Crypto is on a whole different level. But if you understand the volatility of crypto and you can make it your friend, it is the best market in the entire world to trade in. Absolutely no question about it. It basically kills the stock market. It's so good. When we go back to 2020, the end of 2020, globally, the stock markets were worth about $95 trillion. The bond markets, around the same time, $128 trillion. What you can see over time, money goes from stocks into bonds when there's a risky event in the market, such as the default in the Chinese property market segment or whatever else. When it goes the reverse way, so we have an outflow from bonds into stocks, of course, into crypto as well. That signals that people are regaining confidence. We just need to keep our eye on the stock market for this reason. It's very, very important for crypto. Why is that? Just like your alts are affected by Bitcoin's price action, Bitcoin is one area of investment substitutability. 
What that means is that people can put their money into stocks or precious metals or wherever they want, businesses, etc. We need to keep our eye on the fact that crypto is just one investment classification. When we look at the S&P 500, the proxy for stocks, we look at the NASDAQ because the NASDAQ is a technology index and Bitcoin is cryptographic technology. But the S&P 500 is the proxy for stocks. It's up 25% for the past year. Not a bad return, really. Better than bank interest. Poor old gold down 4%. But this is actually good because there's a lot of talk of war and all sorts of horrible things out there. Gold reacts to negative news. It loves negative news. The fact that it's down is actually a really good thing. Not, of course, for the gold holders. Gold holders would prefer it was positive, of course, absolutely. Bitcoin is up 112% over the past year. And just to let you know, I was a former gold trader, so I understand gold pretty well. And I love gold. Gold is awesome. The financial markets are incredibly complex, but we can gain some basic overviews, some headlines, just by looking at the charts. We can see the VIX, the volatility index, the market's fear gauge. It's coming down after it spiked up really high. You can see there's a bit of volatility in this volatility. <laughs> Excuse the pun. What actually happens when fear leaves the market, prices go up. What are we seeing with the NASDAQ, the technology index? It is seeking to consolidate above this level, this previous peak. It's having a little bit of trouble doing it, but it's certainly above it at the moment. Like crude oil. So what is oil doing? It was wobbling around this support line and it's now made the play for the secondary resistance, seeking to turn that into support. That could have inflationary effects because oil is used in transportation. Transportation is costed into food and a variety of other things, products and goods. Let's have a look at the bond prices, which is a really important area for us to look at. The blue line in the background is Bitcoin's fingerprint. It can show what Bitcoin is doing relative to the stock market. We're all about crypto. We're not about the stock market, but crypto is entering the stock market. So we cover these things. It's really important to see what is going on from a macro perspective. We can see the bond prices just bubbling along this support line seeking to get above that once resistance turning it to support which is effectively done now it has two more levels of resistance above it this can be a risk on indicator but not now the important thing is do not panic we just trade as though everything is fine and look at the chart and understand what the chart is doing when we look at the bond yields, which is the inverse to bond prices, we can see those coming down to support. But it's finding a level of support here before it actually reaches that tight support line. But they are definitely under resistance. We can also look at gold. Gold is starting to break out. This could signify many things. This is in the futures. We track the futures because they actually help us to gain real time data. If you don't have futures, you've got a lot of gaps all over the place. And we don't like gaps. We want consistent data. That's the way to go. We can see gold starting to break through its resistance. This is particularly important. We need to keep our eye on what gold is doing. So why do we need to keep our eye on gold? If gold starts to go parabolically up, like bond prices go parabolically up, this signifies that there potentially are problems in the market. We will see that already in crypto, but it's a point of triangulation. The key with all of this data is do not suffer the light switch effect. Negative news does not mean everything is going to zero. It's price is always moving in a wave. I'll just quickly take you through chaos zone analysis, the four stages that all investors and traders progress through to become consistently profitable and attain real wealth. Zone one and zone two are all about certainty. People need certainty. They have one dimensional choices. Out of these three options, they've picked one and they've stuck with it, be it up or down or sideways. Consequently so, when price moves in a way, which it always does, it terrorizes people in zone one, which is the panic zone, 
and zone two, which is the blame zone. This is all about internal and external conflict, both of which are really, really bad for someone's health. Zones three and four are the patience and rule zone and the meaning zone. This is all about probability and rules and having a lot of patience, probabilistic fearlessness, what we talk about every single day, 365 days a year is all about looking at the chart in front of us. We don't light switch, but what is light switch? It's basically something that happens in zone one and zone two. When people get negative news, they tend to go all out or they get forced and trapped. If they get forced and trapped, that just basically means they've bought at a price and price is going down and they're sitting on potentially heavy losses. They could get to the point where they say, it's just going to go down to zero. I'm, I'm sick of this. I'm selling everything. And that is generally the time the price starts to come around. That's why we always seek probabilistic fearlessness. We're not like a light switch, all in or all out. And if anybody tells you to go all in, please pay particular attention to that person and say, I don't believe you're my friend because nobody with an institutional mindset would ever say that. When you come to probabilistic fearlessness, it's all about scaling into a position, layering your buys, and then when you want to sell, scale out. It's never a light switch. I cover this in great de detail in the masterclass, the layering in and layering out, also how to mark up charts. I also cover all the background of these particular drivers. It's really important to understand what they mean to crypto, not what they mean to the stock market, what they mean to crypto. That's really important. We can see the DXY starting to starting to come up. It's had a bit of consolidation here, but it's starting to eke its way up. And one thing that many, many people say is that there is a negative relationship between Bitcoin and the dollar. So for example, we could easily test that. Why don't we look back here? So what's happening here? We can see Bitcoin going up and the dollar came down for a bit, but then it went up. Okay. And Bitcoin came down and the dollar came down, but then it went up when this was coming down and then it went up and it's going up. What you will see over time is that there are potential relationships that phase in and phase out. I want you to always think, what is the price data telling me now? Is it directly correlated? Is, for example, uh, are they going up together? They don't need to match. You're not gonna get a 100% <laughs> correlation between anything in the stock market or the crypto market. Things will always move around. But what is the general pattern? It's really important to understand that. In crypto and in life, opportunities reset daily. That's rule 28. On the 5th of December, I actually locked in the top 32 cryptos. We'll just see how they're behaving now. And they have moved around a little bit in terms of pole position. We can see Bitcoin. Bitcoin is still under resistance, multiple levels, but it's starting to consolidate. We can see Ethereum, much stronger technical pattern. It hasn't broken down like Bitcoin has. It's really, really strong. And that's not surprising. Ethereum is a fantastic project and of course, ecosystem. It's just literally just above the support line. That's pretty good. Binance coin, look at it. It's just rocketing. It's very, very strong. It's the strongest of the preceding two. It's the strongest of those three. It's doing quite well. Looking at Solana, we can see Solana is under resistance, making its way back to a support line. Cardano could be potentially bottoming out here. It's a bit of a speculative play. We've got to see how Bitcoin goes, but just be aware that ADA may turn around and make a play up for its resistance line. That is quite a good percentage increase, but it, that is a risky trade. XRP is still under resistance but seeking to consolidate. We can see this consolidation going on here because it's matching Bitcoin's fingerprint. DOT is also consolidating. And we can see that it's just about to pass one level of tight resistance, but it's still under another one. 
just very much like what Bitcoin is under at the moment. Luna, we can see Luna bouncing around and doing quite well. It came back, nearly touched this support line and bounced up. It's very, very strong at present. Elon Musk recently said that Doge would be accepted to buy Tesla merchandise. Look at this particular spike. I'm just going to zoom in there. For Doge, we can see Elon's tweet certainly raised the price of Doge up 45%, but unfortunately, it also fell over 20%. What we always want to keep our eye on, new spikes are generally unsustainable. So if some really fantastic news comes in, for example, a Coinbase listing, or Elon says something interesting, or other influencers do things, you just need to be really, really aware that you may want to trade this spike, not buy it. Also, from a technical standpoint, Doge is under a lot of heavy selling resistance. Of course, as Doge becomes more mainstream, gets adopted, has practical use cases, this selling pressure will decrease. But it's very important to understand this is harder resistance to get over than something like AVAX. When people are looking at the market from a trading perspective, they're looking very much on the concept of how can I make X percent return? And that X percent is always your call. And of course, if you want larger numbers, larger X's, you have to wait longer. Let's have a look at AVAX. We can see it's just bounced from support. We can see the chip has come down quite a way and looks to be consolidating around this position at the moment. Unfortunately, not too many retail traders and investors understand this, but meme coins are designed to trap new money. Now, that doesn't mean that a meme coin can't become central coin. It can't become something that's good, and it can, and it does, but under very limited circumstances. What we've seen with SHIB, SHIB rallied up like a crazy thing, but has since reduced in price down to its low here, around 66%. So many people bought as it was going up the wall. What do we know? If it goes up the lift, it's going to come down the stairs. And this is a thing that we see play out time and time and time again. When you are professional in your trading, even if you're investing and you know that all investors become traders anytime they buy, an investor may touch this, but a professional trader wouldn't. However, around this particular price point, that may become actually attractive from a speculative play, not necessarily something that you would want to put all in. And remember, we never ever do all in. That's very bad advice. Let's have a look at Matic. Matic is making its way up. This is good. We've got some positive air here. Matic is looking very strong. What do we what do we do if we want to get into Matic? We take advantage of the fact that price is always moving in a wave. We don't need instant gratification. You're actually dealing with your life force, your money. You want to wait for the price to come to you. That's the key. And never, please, ever, ever, ever buy at market. I've seen so many influencers showing buying at market. This is a really crazy thing to do, and it teaches incredibly bad habits. We can see Litecoin is under duress. It's under resistance, multiple levels. Uni is also under resistance. Algo, under resistance. Chainlink, under resistance. The incredible thing about crypto, when crypto wants to party, when the price wants to go up, it can shoot up unbelievably. Looking at the next stage, we can see Bitcoin Cash under resistance. Tron is under resistance. Nick raised a really good question. He asked the community, what is happening? What's cooking with the metaverse, the universe, the universe of online digital experience, or also the omniverse? Is it a real long-term play? So when we look at something like Mana and Axie Infinity, are they here to stay or are they just fads? Are they passing? And will the big players, the big gaming players, will they come in 
and with the for example unreal engine which is quite literally unreal it's just so good will that actually displace these players one thing in markets is there is always a first mover advantage you can see many times in history corporate history and invention history that the first ones to market often lead a dominant position and they can overtake established players that are much much larger than them how can they do that because they leverage they leverage their existing tech their existing understanding what i would suggest when you want to get into the omniverse which is nvidia's play on facebook's meta or metaverse i would always suggest that you buy well buy when the price is coming down and buy at support this is purely a technical thing if you think about it you can actually do your entries based on technical analysis it's very very powerful to do that because they do have the world's attention and the world will go online and there will be plenty of space in the metaverse or the omniverse for that just check out either term because they're quite good we can see decentraland mana it looks to be starting to turn around starting to show a little bit of strength in there axie infinity coming back to a level of support that's really good we would expect a technical bounce stella stella is under resistance vet not looking too good under resistance as well cosmos adam not looking too good either under resistance ftx token ftt it was such a fantastic project lots and lots of positive momentum and then things dropped out just keep your eye on the technical action let's have a look into the next date we can see egld coming back to try to reclaim that support and it's bounced back under resistance icp has sold off and keeps selling down and down and down how low can something go it can go all the way to zero and that's really important to understand when i look at something like icp from a technical perspective not a fundamental perspective a technical perspective i wouldn't touch this with a thousand foot pole why why wouldn't i do it because it has downward price momentum if you're seeking to buy something elron or sand or anything with an upward price momentum behind it definitely looks better than something with this downward price momentum what is this actually saying from a technical perspective not a fundamental a technical perspective they are very very different from each other a technical perspective the market's attention is not here in icp that's really important to understand a lot of people when they get into any particular trading of crypto they look for what's been absolutely hammered and they say wow it's so cheap it was 360 it's 24 dollars now if it improves back to 360 i'll make a fortune actually it's the wrong way to think what you really want to do is to find something like for example sand that is showing positive price momentum it has the market's attention the market is calling out for investors and traders to get into this particular one it's much much better to go from for example 26 cents up to five dollars than try to recoup this this is very very high risk just a really important thing to share with you let's have a look at sand sand we can see is consolidating but it's still under resistance it may drop down to this sort of around 409 level filecoin a fantastic project fantastic in so many ways easy to understand it, it's a fantastic use case but what does the market say what is the the market saying through that particular chart it's saying i'm not interested I go through this in a lot of depth in the masterclass, but I really like sharing it with people. It's important to know what not to buy. We can see HBAR is under resistance, but starting to consolidate. Theta, under resistance. Ethereum Classic, under resistance. It was interesting yesterday, in yesterday's episode, I sung Celine Dion, but I just said, near far, wherever you are. <laughs> 
Ajith nailed it. Well done, my friend. You're a legend. Okay, it was quite subtle. Let's have a look. Nia is coming back to a level of support. This big spike up just shows there are a lot of sellers pushing the price down. There's another fundamental difference between investors and traders. Traders are always taking profit. That allows them to cycle their cash. A lot of people say, oh, I don't want to pay tax. Just think about it this way. If you have potentially a great investment and it does a 10x and you cash it out, you'll have to pay tax then. It's basically inescapable. So just hold a constant and don't worry too much about it. Rule 130, make volatility your best friend. In the crypto market, a lot of people when they enter, they are terrified by the volatility. Actually, you should get excited by the volatility. Make it your best friend. When you make volatility your best friend, you will have so many financial blessings to yourself and those you love because you're working within the rules of this system and crypto is unlike any other market. Let's have a look through some community favorites. Of course, before looking at anything, rule 444 is critically important. Ignore any tips, advice and marketing and always do your own research. I've heard so many horror stories of people's friends telling other friends, oh, this is a fantastic project. And that particular person goes, of course, all in and then just gets financially slaughtered, as does their friend. It's really important to do your own research. Don't take anyone's advice for anything. Make sure that you can independently verify. I don't endorse any particular crypto of anything, except of course for Bitcoin and Ethereum, Binance coin, they're fantastic. But all the rest, I think they have all potential, but I don't say you should get this one. So just to let you know, but there are some really interesting technicals that play out on these particular community coins. Veracity, we can see veracity is still under resistance as is most of the crypto market. Things can turn around really, really quickly. Have a look at veracity. It's following Bitcoin's fingerprint to the ping. This is actually really good. When Bitcoin starts to take off, VRA will do so more quickly. Just keep that in mind. There's always a gearing factor between Bitcoin's directional price movement or gravity and a particular alt. We can see Icon doing the same thing. When Bitcoin turns around, Icon will do very well. KSM, we can see a similar thing, not the same as the last two, but we can see that KSM is under resistance. IOTA, IOTA is seeking to change its potential resistance line into support. You can see just how volatile things can get. With BitTorrent, it's plummeted down and then shot straight back up. This is what crypto is like. You want to make this volatility your best friend. You want to buy these tails and sell the spikes. It is incredibly profitable. RLC, under resistance. TRB, under resistance. Cartesi, also under resistance, but looking to stabilize. I'd like to leave a little quote with you and thank you for making it this far. That's fantastic. I have a statement here. Make excellence in all things, who you are, not what you do. I think this is a beautiful focus in life. Making excellence who you are is just phenomenal. It becomes part of your fiber and your being. And of course, we know we're talking about positive excellence, not negative excellence. As our secret little phrase, maybe put the word excellence somewhere in the comments. That's always so much fun to do this. I hope you found the content useful. Please consider sharing and liking this video if you think it will help others. Thank you very much to our moderators for keeping our community safe from scammers. Please say hi and let me know where you're viewing from and if you have any questions. If you would like daily updates on price movements in the crypto market, seven days a week, 365 days a year, please subscribe to YouTube. I've left helpful links in the description of this video. Please remember, crypto is volatile. Always prepare yourself for the best and worst case scenarios. 
reality will likely be between them. Stay safe out there my friends, take care and see you next time. Bye for now.